Right. The device we're looking at today is the LTO Tracker Gen 1 HD. So, this is the same generation as the LTO Tracker, but it does come with a few differences. Firstly, it does have a higher screen resolution. Let me just try and get this thing in focus as much as possible. So, the screen has a higher resolution and the sensor has a higher resolution. What this means is that you have a bigger area that you can view through on the tracker itself and the resolution at different ranges is different. What this also means is you've got a few other settings and modes available to you. So I'm going to start the first one is, and I think this is going to be very important if you want to keep yourself hidden, a brightness setting. So I've got this set at around very dark. You can take it very low to where it's almost imperceptible and you're actually going to have difficulty seeing it, but I think that's a good idea. Or take it all the way to the point where it's basically visible in direct sunlight on the back if you're using it in, in daytime. Now let's get those modes later, but let's just reset this. So I'm going to leave it at about a point where I'm comfortable with easily seeing what's going on in the screen, but I've minimized my light signature from my end. Now, first difference you're going to notice is when I go zoom in. So, this tracker has a full monocular view. The bottom half is not empty or devoid of any screen. It actually has a screen all the way up and down. Also, in my opinion, the balancing of the contrast done on the, the digital side is better. The system keeps it in check more and you're more able to clearly see what's going on even when you suddenly change your focal point and it has to adapt, for example, if you go up and down like that. Ah, here's our first customer for the night, Elon Bull. Okay, so I think this is a good time to zoom in and try and get an idea what we're working with. So we're at six times zoom, maximum zoom. This Elon Bull is standing about 100 meters. Now, to keep in mind, you're looking at about an animal the size of four or five adults standing next to each other. So, that would be what it would look like if four or five guys were huddled next to each other at 100 meters. In my experience, this thing can safely identify a human sized heat source at about 70 meters. Past that you can have, have difficulty differentiating from a terrain and whether or not it's a one person or a group of pe people coming at you. Now let's back it out to about three times. That's where I find uh, four times for the camera. That's where I find it to be that's most useful for long range spotting. So Different settings, you've got black that in inverts the white, so black is hot, you've got high white, and there you'll notice the extremely hot areas are marked as black, uh, as white, but even hotter goes into that red yellow range, and then black again from that. So you'll see that one has black around it, red yellow around the core. And then it becomes black again at the very center. And once again you get this in high, high black. And then, not very useful in my opinion, red and green. I'll show green later, but red, red has the advantage in that it actually has red light. So your night, night blindness is going to be limited to a degree if you're looking up and down from the site several times. Now... With a normal tracker, you wouldn't have any more settings left, you cycle black to white. However, this one has two extra settings, range and copper. Here's green, not very useful. Here's range. Now, range, if you'll notice, color of the rainbows. What is nice with this setting specifically, 
and what it is its downfall is its ability to give a very good idea of very slight gradients in front of you so for example I can see other modes I wouldn't be able to see is that a hot spot or is that a hot spot in this mode because slight gradients are exaggerated greatly due to the wide palette that your screen has you're much able to see move you are much able to see different heat sources very clearly in this case spotting that eland is not very difficult but with other sources more difficult now this does give trouble you can see it very quickly overcompensates if it doesn't have a very good reference point but in my experience this actually works very well for if you are on the move and you need to rapidly acquire targets find people and see what who is moving ahead of you it does have the disadvantage and it is very disorientating you might be able to get used to it but since you don't really have any idea of what's going on in front of you it's not very clear this is for finding humans rapidly and getting the idea across now next one is copper this to a degree is an amalgamation of the previous modes and the range mode in that you've got a bit more of a palette but it's limited it's not as clear the diff the contrast between the different heat gradients are not as clear but it does mean you're able to make out more the road clearer and then you basically just cycle back to white and you can zoom in zoom out now 1.7 times is about where the you get the full monocle effect and I think this is ideal for if you just want to see what's going on within 20 meters of yourself you might want to zoom in just to double check but I find that not very useful at that close ranges maybe at longer ranges but you want to get a defined idea but as you can see here zoomed in a bit you can clearly see the terrain around you to a degree things that are differently have different heat gradients look different so now let's just cycle through the other modes to get a more zoomed out perspective there's your black there's your high white and like I said you'll notice it does correct a lot but that's Elon staying stable there there's your high black inverse of the previous except for the the high points there's your red like I said but difficult to see what's going on but it does give you the advantage of you can very clearly see what's going on when you look up green if you want to do night vision it just looks like that it's just this filter and then your range like I said you could probably learn to use this but you're gonna have difficulty navigating in just this mode solely and then your copper which gives the best of both worlds in terms of the ability to spot detail and the ability to see clear contrasts